Bridging the Gap with Dual Credit Earth Science. What's the gap? The gap is in earth science education. When we look at the amount of earth science taught in middle school, high school, and college, we notice there's a problem. We're simply not teaching much earth science in high school. In California, we teach it in the sixth grade and sometimes in the ninth grade, but the ninth grade courses are often taught to non-college prep students. What do we teach in high school? Biology, chemistry, and physics, and advanced placement versions of the same courses. Sometimes there are a few electives. I took a look at high school science in San Francisco and found that the courses were typical of courses throughout the state and the country. What do they teach? Biology, chemistry, physics, and honors or AP versions. Perhaps a little environmental science and astronomy as an elective. San Francisco University has biology and chemistry integrated for the two years, nine and ten, and then they have years of AP, chemistry, environmental science, physics, and honors physics. They have one semester electives of biology and one semester of astronomy. That's it. That's all the earth science. The saddest of all I found was Lowell High School. The teacher there has been trying very hard to teach a quality geology course to grades 11 and 12, but he hasn't gotten the enrollment, he hasn't gotten the backing of his school, and more importantly, he hasn't gotten the University of California to recognize his course as a lab science. As a result, he has not gotten the chance to teach this course. The University of California, like some universities across the country, don't recognize earth science. They require two and recommend three years of a lab science. But what do they call a lab science? Biology, chemistry, and physics. It is possible to get an earth science course accepted as a lab science if you prove that you have a rigorous coverage of at least two of the three fundamental subjects of biology, chemistry, and physics. Is that true across the country? Over 92% of students nationwide will take biology, and 16% will be taking an AP or honors version of biology. Two-thirds of those students will take chemistry, and one-third will take physics. How many take geology or earth science? Less than a quarter. But that's not the worst of it. Notice that biology, chemistry, and physics are a full year, whereas geology, earth science, or astronomy are only one semester. What has been happening to those numbers over time? They've been going up in biology, chemistry, and physics, but remaining reasonably stable in the geology. What can we conclude from this? Well, I certainly conclude that 23% of high school students taking one semester of earth science is not enough. But that's not the worst of it. Not only do we have 23% taking only one semester, but those aren't the best 23%. Those are not our top students. The students taking earth science are the ones least likely to go to college. We have fallen into the rocks for jocks syndrome. We are offering earth science to our least capable students. Now, don't get me wrong. Earth science should be taught to all students, but the fact is it's not taught to many college-bound students at all. So not only are we not teaching enough earth science in high school, we are simply not teaching enough earth science to college-bound students. So what do we do? Well, hey, let's offer it a rigorous high school earth science course. But if you offer it, will they come? Well, the answer is no. And frankly, probably they shouldn't come. Top science students are taking AP Biology, AP Chemistry, and AP Physics B or C, and sometimes AP Environmental Science. Public schools may even get money for each student that takes an AP course. Therefore, it makes sense to offer AP Geology or AP Earth Science. Well, believe me, I tried. Over a decade ago, a group of us got together, went to the College Board, and tried to convince them to write an AP Geology course, and they declined. 
As you know, the AP stands for Advanced Placement. And this little thing here means it's all theirs. You can't write an AP course. The College Board has to do it. The other option is International Baccalaureate. But just like the APs, they offer Biology, Chemistry, and Physics, and Environmental Science. So the only option left is Honors. Honors is usually defined as a more rigorous alternative to an existing course. One huge advantage of an honors course is that it may have a weighted grade point average, as does an AP or an IB course. So a student getting a B in honors biology would have the same grade point average as a student getting an A in regular biology. It's not as good as AP or IB simply because it's not accepted for college credit. However, 30% of high school students are taking an AP, IB, or honors version of some science. We've got to get earth science in there. The GPA is so important to them because it's so hard to get into the college of your choice. And even more important to our students is that having a greater GPA gives them a greater chance of earning scholarship dollars. Would you recommend that a student take geology when they could be taking an AP or an honors course? Of course not. It's not to their advantage to do so. That's why I recommend a dual credit course. A dual credit course is a college level course taught in a high school for which students can also receive credit from a university. I've been teaching a dual credit course. I paired up with UCLA and I fashioned my course after their ESS 1F course. Now they teach their introductory course in one semester. I have a whole year. I call it Honors Geology, and my students can earn five credit units on a UCLA extension transcript. They get the Honors Grade Point Bump, which is all important to their transcript. It counts as a D lab course in the University of California system. And the cost to my students is substantial. It's over $500 for those five credit units. But if I had paired up with a community college, the cost of those credits could have been less than the cost of taking an AP course. So this is my Honors Geology course. It's online. It's available to all. Everything that I do is there. I've even put it in Word format so that teachers can borrow whatever they like and adapt it to their heart's content. However, many teachers need an Honors Earth Science course, so I paired up with teachers and professors from UC, and we created an Honors Earth Science syllabus. We then presented it to the University of California to see if they would accept it as an Honors Credit course as well as a D-Lab course, and they did. I have two courses. I have Honors Geology, which is dual credit. It's Honors. It's a lab course and it's offered to grade 11 and 12. I also have Honors Earth Science. I'm not teaching it myself, but I'm encouraging others to teach it. It could easily be dual credit. It is getting Honors Credit, Lab Course Credit, and it's designed for grades 11 and 12. What I think really sealed the deal with the University of California is that we include the prerequisites of Algebra, Biology, and Chemistry. That proved to them that it was indeed a rigorous earth science course. So the advantages be that there are going to be higher enrollment of college-bound students into it. I have found the cooperation with UCLA to be a huge advantage. It certainly encourages college-bound students to take earth science in college because, let's face it, you can't fall in love with a course you've never met. It also encourages students to apply to a local university. After all, they already have a transcript. And that will empower them to think of themselves at that university full time. And the college credit on a university transcript is much more likely to transfer than an AP or an IB credit. One question that often comes up is whether there are enough qualified teachers to teach dual credit courses. We have kind of a vicious cycle going on. Since we have very few high school earth science courses. 
that leads us to have very few students knowing about earth science and choosing to study in college, very few earth science majors, and therefore very few qualified earth science teachers. We've got to break this cycle somewhere, and I suggest that the place we break it is right here. If we can have more high school earth science courses in the first place, then everything else will simply follow. Are there enough teachers? It would be a problem if we suddenly got 93% of all high school students taking earth science. But that's a problem we are not likely to have. There are certainly enough teachers out there chomping at the bit to be the first ones teaching an honors level course. So let's let them teach that course and see what happens next. What are long-term effects? Probably the most important long-term effect is that we will have citizens that are more literate in the earth sciences. We certainly will have more students studying earth science in college, more qualified earth science teachers, more earth science majors, and even more earth scientists. Is that a good thing? Well, let's see. The AGI Workforce Committee concluded that the supply of newly trained geoscientists is falling short of the workforce demand. The reason is simple. Most of the working geoscientists are going to retire within the next 15 years. Their report is full of graphs like this, showing the workforce is the baby boomers who are going to retire with no one to take their place. I thought the most interesting of their graphs was this one, because not only does it show the decline in the number of geoscientists in the field, but it also shows the increased demand for geoscientists. Now that is a gap. How do we fill that gap? Well, we'd better have a number of good plans, but I'm suggesting that one of those plans could be a dual credit course. I would like to thank UCLA and the National Science Foundation for their support, as well as AGU. Thank you very much.